have been asking me to do this video for a while now on the looper that I use for my live solo gig. So let me grab that off the pedal board real quick. Man, this thing is hard to get off of the pedal board here. Here it is, the TC Electronic Ditto X4, and forgive the pollen dust, I had an outdoor gig yesterday in March in Florida, we start getting this pollen all over the place. I'm going to go over a few things. First, I'm going to touch on some of the features, the high level features, which I probably only use like 30% of them. Also going to go over the connections, how I connect this using my guitar effects for both acoustic and electric, and how I run this into the soundboard. And again, lastly, I'm going to share, and this is really the meat and potatoes of this video how I use the Ditto X4 looper at my live solo gigs. Now I'm also going to tell you some things I like about it, why I got this particular pedal here, and I'm going to share a few dislikes as well. So you'll want to hang around for the entire video. Let's go over the high level features of the Ditto X4. The first thing you might notice is that there are two loops, and this is actually a feature I'll use from time to time. I'm going to share a live example of this feature, and of course how I use the pedal as well. So that's coming after this, uh, but the two loops, you can record one loop, right? And then you can have a completely separate loop on that other loop on what's called loop two here. This is cool because you can have like one rhythm and you record something on top of that with loop two, and then you can stop the loop two and still have your loop one going. So that's just one of the many ways you can use the two loops together. Now you've got this uh, little switch on here. You can see it says serial, I know I don't mean Cocoa Pebbles cereal, but cereal, and then you've got sync. Uh, I've never used the cereal, so I always put it on sync, and what I believe that does is kind of help keep those loops in sync together. Sometimes you might get off a little bit on that second one. I've got a live example coming up on how I use that particular feature on the occasion that I use it. Now you also have the ability to save and store these loops on both of these loop channels here. They're not really channels, but just both of the loops, one and two. You've got the ability to save that uh, as a loop if you want to bring that up again. I don't use this feature. I'm not saying you should use it I just personally don't uh, for me I like to just record that live loop just a short segment and then play some soloing over that again live examples coming up so hang around for that uh, but you can store the loops you do have the ability to do that and of course you've got a level for each loop here so if you wanted like the first loop to be a little louder than the second one or vice versa well you have that okay so you have that capability now you also have a stop feature here, which I think is very, very cool. And this is one of the reasons why I got this particular pedal. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes here. Uh, but you can stop the loop. You can stop everything just by clicking this. And of course, if you want to delete everything that you just recorded, just hold that down. Um, you can use these two loops here in the same manner. You would have to double click that to stop. Okay, which that kind of throws me off. Again, we're gonna talk more about that and having this stop here. This is like the main reason I got this pedal, by the way. More to come. Uh, but you can double click on any of these loops to stop it, and you can hold it down to delete that loop. Uh, I use this feature over here to stop and delete. You also have a decay on top of that. So if you want that loop that you're stopping to kind of carry over for a little bit, well, you can have that. You can have it carry over for quite some time there using the decay. Now you also have some different little effects here. Um, you've got, what are these? You've got the tape stop, the fade, the double, the hold, reverse, half once, all that good stuff. Guys, I do not use any of these features. I mean, I've messed around with them before. It's just really not my cup of tea. I have a very specific purpose for the looper, but that is there if that's something that you want to use. What I do is I leave mine on the tape stop there. So if I accidentally click this, then oh, it's not so it's not so bad. I have accidentally clicked this before when it was on reverse or whatever the knob was on, and just this weird effect comes out. I'm like, I didn't mean to do that. It sounds like I screwed up, which technically I guess I did because I clicked a button that I didn't mean to click. Anyway, we're about to get to how I connect everything. So let's take a look at the back of this. You've got MIDI capability. You can do that. Uh, I've got a USB. So if you had some loops saved, I believe you can connect this to your computer and you can pull those and arrange them however again I, I don't use any of these features here you've got the power source and what's cool about the X4 the do X4 is you've got these inputs you've got the uh, the mono and stereo input and output 
What's great about that, I've never used it, but if you had some stereo effects, let's say you're using an effects processor, and I'll share what I'm using in a second here. Uh, you've got an effects processor for your guitar that you've got some, some stereo chorus or ping pong delay or something like that. Well, you could connect those into the stereo inputs here and then run the outputs to two channels on your board and maybe pan those if you've got two speakers to get that true stereo sound. So uh, that's just kind of a cool feature to have if you ever uh, come into a case where you wanna use that feature. Now I'm excited to share some live examples coming up, but let me go over how I connect this briefly with you guys because I know this question comes up quite a bit and I, I had questions on this too when I first started looping. So what I do is I connect my Pod Go. I've got the Line 6 Pod Go. I use this for my effects uh, for both acoustic and electric, which I've got another video on the pedal board setup that I'm using right now. If you guys want to go check that out later, I'll put it up there. Uh, but I basically connect my Pod Go into the input of my looper pedal here. Okay, so that goes to the input. So whatever effects that you're using, whatever DI or effects processor that you're using for your guitar, you'll want to go from the output to the input of the looper, which that means you'll connect your guitar directly into that effects processor. You can see here, I've got my wireless uh, plugged in to the Pod Go. So guitar to your DI slash effects, then that's gonna go into the input of the looper here. Now, I've got the output of the Ditto X4 looper. That's going directly into my soundboard here. So that's a pretty simple setup for the most part. Okay, guitar to DI effects. Uh, your DI effects that goes into the input of the looper, then the output of the looper directly to your soundboard. What this allows you to do, and I want to just touch on this briefly here, uh, this allows you to capture the loop with your current effects and it also allows you to change the effects thereafter because you've already recorded that loop with those effects. You then can change the effects thereafter going from let's say like a rhythm patch to a lead patch like I do in my case and play that lead or whatever you're playing on top of that loop with a different sound. It is time to hear the Ditto X4 looper in action. So I'm gonna share some live footage with you and I'm gonna explain what I'm doing each section here. So this first section you're gonna hear is me just using the basic function of the looper, looping a rhythm so that I can solo along with that rhythm. wanted to briefly share how you can use the two loops so this right here you're gonna hear the rhythm I've got that loop you're gonna hear me play in some lead over it but I'm actually gonna loop a little lead pattern for that second loop so here's that in action live Now this next clip here, you'll notice whenever I want to stop the loop and go back to uh, just the rhythm, uh, what I will do is I'll kind of start playing the rhythm before I just press that stop button on the Ditto X4. So watch this and I'll explain a little bit more on how I do this and why I do it the way that I do. Oh, 
So as you just saw there, what I'll do is I'm playing my leads, right? I'm playing my guitar solos, uh, but then I'll switch back to my rhythm patch on the pod go so that that, you know, that sound is in sync with what I loop and I'll start playing the rhythm so that when I go to press the stop button, it's just a very smooth transition. So that's just a little looping tip there. And then I can go right back into singing or whatever I'm about to start doing at that point. So there are two reasons why I got the ditto x4 as most of you know i started out with this little pedal right here just their regular ditto the tc electronic ditto what i didn't like about this pedal though is that you have to click twice okay to stop the loop well a lot of times i would not click twice all the way so i'd only click one time and of course it starts recording another layer on top of that that kind of threw me off sometimes or just the fact that i had to click twice to stop the loop would kind of throw my rhythm off now that's not a looper problem that's a Jason problem okay so I sought out another looper that had a dedicated stop like this ditto x4 here and the reason I got this particular looper the x4 and not the looper that I'm going to talk about in a second here well they had this on sale at my local guitar shop replay guitar exchange so I'm like dude I've got to have this. Uh, he made a good deal. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I love it because this alone right here, this dedicated stop, I can just click that one time, the rhythm stops, and I'm good. I don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, I don't have to double click it or anything like that. And that one button is for that particular function. That just helps me tremendously on stage. To me, the less I have to worry about on stage when you're playing live, the better off I am. I really want to focus on my singing and playing. I don't one have to focus on well crap I got to click this twice or I click the wrong button and that sort of stuff and again that's not a, that's not a gear issue that's just more of a Jason maybe I'm not as coordinated as I need to be issue nonetheless I like to simplify things when I'm performing on stage a few things I don't care for about this pedal and this really is not a pedal problem again it goes back to a jason problem just being honest with you guys uh, number one i find that when it's on the pedal board and when i'm clicking and clicking and you know stomping this and that sometimes this volume knob gets pushed up I don't know if like a little ghost comes down from above or something and moves it or if it just happens because I'm kind of moving the pedal every time I click. Uh, I may need to put something here to stop it, but I'll notice that <laughs> throughout my shows, this thing just keeps going up and up and up. I like my volume for my loop about right there. Uh, that seems to just kind of be level for me. Uh, some people like it here, some people like it there. Look, whatever you like, that's what you want to leave it as. But in any case, it tends to move around a little bit. Uh, so the other thing I don't care for is this FX button over here. And again, this is a Jason problem. I have accidentally clicked this. <laughs> <laughs> more than once and it'll be on some weird reverse effect or something like that it just throws me off it's like okay what was that well i meant to click stop but i clicked the fx instead uh, so what i do to sort of remedy that is i just put this on tape tape stop here right and i turn the decay that is all the way down so if i do accidentally press this really you can't hear any effect nothing really happens it just it just stops okay uh, anytime you see this on you can just hold it down and it'll disappear so it's not really a big issue but on that note guys what i'm thinking about doing i'm thinking about uh, I don't want to say downgrading, but going back a level, kind of what's in between this Ditto and the Ditto X4, well, they have a Ditto X2, and the Ditto X2, well, that just has the one loop, which I don't need both loops, I just need the one, and it has the dedicated stop. You can either have it programmed as a stop or effects. I'm always going to have it programmed as a stop, so uh, I would have just one loop, one stop button, and that's enough for me because, again, the only reason I loop is to be able to play some guitar solos is something that I wanted to add to my shows. It just adds a new and different dynamic. Not a lot of people play guitar solos, right? Uh, and that's just kind of my forte. Those of you who have been following me for any amount of time, you know I love to shred and I love to play lead guitar. So I'm like, well, why not showcase some of that at my live acoustic solo gigs? So I do that. And guys, it really makes a huge difference. So I want to encourage you 
to, hey, throw some instrumental stuff in there from time to time. Even if you're not a fast lead player, you don't have to be. Uh, even if you want to play like, just loop like a rhythm, a simple rhythm, and maybe you just want to play another layer over that, even if it's not a true guitar solo. Again, it doesn't have to be. Just do something, you know, something different. Maybe play those chords in a different place or just play some simple melody over that looped rhythm that you did. Uh, it gives your voice a break for one. And again, it just adds a different dynamic to your shows. And I think you'll see a big difference in the crowd and of course in the tip bucket as well when you add some different stuff to your live shows. So guys, I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions, drop those in the comments. And also let me know if you'd like for me to do another video going a little bit deeper into my looping process live on stage. I'll just, uh, I'll film another live show for you and just show you in more detail. Again, it's a pretty simple process, but if you'd like another video specific on how I loop, definitely drop that in the comments as well. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and as always, keep playing music. Mm -hmm.